This is Dr. Nurs in my office, um, and I'm going to continue in the stereochemistry series. This is Stereochemistry 6, to go along with the book that I've written that's on the web covering stereochemistry. So this is just kind of giving a visual to go along with that book. Um, in Stereochemistry 5, we looked at two stereocenters using what, what I would call a wedge and hash type drawing. In Stereochemistry 6, we're going to deal with a different situation with two stereocenters. And to give you a little more flexibility, I'm going to use a what is called a Fisher projection. Okay, So um, what we want to do, this is the problem that we want to solve. What we want to do is draw all the stereoisomers of 2,3-dichloro-2,3-dichloro-butane. Two, two, and then what we want to do is assign absolute configuration to all asymmetric carbons and establish all stereochemical relationships. This is a very typical problem that you will be faced with. Okay, now as I said, 2,3-dichlorobutane. What does that look like? So if I were going to just write that on the board, this would be 2,3-dichlorobutane. It's a very simple molecule. And you'll see in my little booklet I use very simple molecules. Um, now, instead of using a wedge and hash approach, which is a perfectly legitimate approach, I'm going to use a Fisher projection. And as you will recall, a Fisher projection can look like this if you have one asymmetric carbon, or it would look like this if you had two asymmetric carbons. And remember, it looks kind of like crosses. Um, each of these intersections in this projection, this is a Fisher projection, is an asymmetric carbon. So this represents one asymmetric carbon, and this represents the other asymmetric carbon. And as you will recall, the horizontal line in the Fisher projection are two bonds that are coming out towards you. So in other words, these are really like wedges. And the vertical lines are hashes. So this always has the same meaning. Now to start this problem, you really don't have to put a lot of thought into it. You should just slap it down. And I'm a big advocate of writing first and doing grammar later. And when it comes to doing structures, I take exactly the same approach. I think you should just slap it down. The problem is draw all stereoisomers. It does not matter which stereoisomer you write first. So what I want to do is represent these two asymmetric carbons. And all I have to do is draw the atoms that are around that, that asymmetric carbon on one of these and then around that one on, on the other of these. Okay. So on this carbon, there is a chlorine, hydrogen, and a methyl. And on this carbon, there's a chlorine, a hydrogen, and a methyl. You don't have to put that much thought into it. So I'm going to put chlorine, hydrogen, methyl. I am not thinking too much. Of course, we're always thinking, but I'm not thinking too much here. All right, so I just drew one stereoisomer. Okay. Now, as you learned in stereochemistry 5, there should be a maximum of 2 to the n stereoisomers, where n equals the number of asymmetric carbons. This is not a particularly important formula, but it is a formula that is somewhat useful when you're trying to draw stereoisomers because it puts an upper limit on the number that you would draw. 
Now in this case, again, because there are two, we expect a maximum of 2 to the n, where n is 2. So we expect a maximum of 4 stereoisomers. But remember, it's a maximum. It, it may not be the exact number. It's the maximum. Now in the last case, on the last problem we did, we did have 4 stereoisomers. Okay? Now in principle, what would those 4 stereoisomers be? I believe we sort of outlined this. The possibilities would be RR, SS, RS, and SR. So we want to draw these on the board. Okay, so I've drawn one of them here. Which one did I draw? Okay. The beauty of a Fisher projection is that the groups are always coming out or going back. And we learned the little tricks of the trade. Okay, so what I'm going to do is use assignment as my tool to assign the absolute configuration. Okay, we're going to use our little tricks to do that. But then ultimately, we're also going to use the assignment to establish relationships. So I'm going to assign this. So if I go to the first asymmetric carbon, the number one priority group is the chlorine, because these are very simple examples. The number two priority group is this carbon that has the chlorine on it, because at the number two level, it's carbon versus carbon. Okay? And this carbon has three hydrogens on it. This carbon has a chlorine, hydrogen, and a methyl. So this is going to be number two. This is going to be number three, and the hydrogen is number four. Now, how do you work with a Fisher projection? When you have two centers, it's exactly the same as when you have one center. You trace the circle from one to two to three. It's going clockwise. Because it's going clockwise, it looks like it's R. But because the hydrogen is coming out towards you, it's a wedge by definition. You have to reverse the designation, designation as I described before. So it looks R, but it's really S. We've already done all the work for the whole problem. So if I assign the stereochemistry here, this is 1. This is 2. Up here, I'll call this prime. You'll see this in my uh, notes as well. 3 prime. This is 4 prime. Okay? 1, 2, 3. Trace the circle. It looks like it's R, but it's really R. Okay? So it's really R because number 4 is going away from you. Okay? So this one is S. R. So we've drawn this one, okay? Because I've run out of time, I'm going to continue this on the next video.